hard to follow that. Thank you, William. <coughs> it's amazing. Good morning. I'm Sherry Bennett. Welcome you to the Sterling United Methodist Church. All of you here and those of you who are watching us online, we're just glad that you have chosen to worship with us this morning. A few quick announcements before we get started. We are pleased to welcome back Caitlin Little. Uh, this Sunday, she's sharing an update on her work in missions through the World Race. Join us Wednesday, February 22nd on our Ash Wednesday service in the Connection Cafe from 7 to 7.15. We'll have a time of worship, the imposition of ashes, and some fellowship together. Also, please join us for our next Connect 242 event. Win or lose today, we'll be celebrating, that was last week, win or lose last week, we'll be celebrating the, on the 26th with a soup, S-O-U-P, Burpole party, chickies, chick, oh my goodness, chili soup cook-off, and a game night. Join us from 4 to 6 in the Connection Cafe. If we can be in prayer for you, please let us know through the church office. We'd be loving to pray for you any way we can. And I don't think we have any other announcements. Okay. <coughs> Well, good morning, church. Good morning. We've got a small but mighty team today, but it's going to be good. It's going to be good. Um, well, as we transition into a time of worship, I'd love to read just a few verses out of Matthew chapter 5. It says, You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its, loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand, and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. So would you stand together as we worship our God who is building his kingdom right here. Come set your rule and reign in our hearts again. Increase in us, we pray. Unveil why we're made. Come set our hearts ablaze with hope like wildfire in our very souls. Holy Spirit, come invade us now. Show 
you pray with me. Father God, thank you so much for this opportunity to gather in this place, to be your kingdom and to be kingdom builders for you, Lord. God, you have called us so many things, not the least of them being your children, your light, your hands, and your feet. God, we are so blessed just to be a part of the work that you are already doing in this world. So God, as we continue in a spirit of worship, God, would you, would you bring to light anything in us that keeps us from being fully present with you, that keeps us from living to our fullest potential as your kingdom workers? And God, will you help us to bring them to you? Because God, for, for everything that holds us back, there are so many more reasons to lay it at your feet and to be thankful for all that you do for us. God, we just give this time up to you because you are the reason why we're here. And we're just so grateful for this opportunity to come together and worship. God, we love you so much. We praise you. And we pray all of this in your name. Amen. Your name. 
And kiddos, you can come on down for children's time. Good morning. It's good to see everyone here. It's good to get a good morning back. <laughs> so I've got something to show you here today. Let me see if I can find one. We all know what these are, right? What are they? Glow sticks. Show me what they do. Look at that. You can even break them a little bit more there. And they start to glow, right? So beforehand, it kind of just looked like a plastic stick. But now it's really cool, isn't it? When that light shines through it. I love glow sticks, don't you? It's You too, that's right. <laughs> it's good stuff for sure. So what's the first thing that you do when you, when you um, get a glow stick? You break it, right? You cannot resist to break it, right? You got to let that light shine, right? Now, once you've broken it and it's looking all great like this, do you just um, hide it? Don't let anyone see the light? No, you wave it around. You show your friends. You tell your brothers and sisters, hey, look at this. Look what I've got. This is awesome. And so it's kind of like God's light when we think about that. So in Matthew 5, what Jordan read to us a little bit earlier, Jesus says, you are the light of the world. A city, city built on a hill cannot be hid. People do not light a lamp and put it under the bushel basket. Rather, they put it on the lampstand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. So we want to make sure that you know, God is kind of like the light in our lives. And as we let that light shine and share God's word and his love with our friends and with our family and with our classmates at school. You know, we're letting our light shine. We've got all of God's light inside of us, and we don't want to hide that away. We want to let everybody see that, to be able to, be able to share that. And not only with, with people here in Sterling, you know, but as Caitlin will talk about later on in the service, you may be even sharing that light all across the world. And that's an awesome thing, isn't it? So to help you remember how to shine your light and share your light, I want you to take a glow stick for yourself and then take a glow stick to share with a friend or you can give it to somebody here in the service because I'm sure that no one wants to leave here without a glow stick. All right? So grab a couple. Take one for yourself and, and one or two to pass along. There you go. Once everyone's got one here, we can pray and then you'll go. All right? There you go. You can just pass those around. Got them? All right. Dear God, thank you for your light. Thank you for these children. Help us. Give us the courage and strength to always be willing to share your light to those around us. In your name we pray. Amen.
If you guys will join me for today's scripture reading, we're going to be in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 20. So we are ambassadors for Christ. Since God is making his appeal through us, we entreat you on behalf of Christ. Be reconciled to God. And now I'll invite Tim Gabrielson and Caitlin Little to come on up. All right, well, I have the privilege of introducing Caitlin Little. Uh, she is a familiar face to many here. Um, Caitlin Little graduated from Sterling College in 2019 and attended Sterling uh, here, UMC, during her college years. After launching with World Race Missions uh, Organization in, to Asia in January 2020, an ominous time to be going in, in retrospect, uh, the trip was cut short by the pandemic, later relaunching in August 2021 to Eastern Europe and all 11 months joyously completed as of last July. Um, as a church, we've uh, supported Caitlin with, uh, with that, and so we're going to hear a little bit about sort of her, her journey and uh, where she's at and where she's going. Um, so she'll do a presentation for um, maybe 15 minutes or so about um, yeah, her trip. And then after that, we'll have a chance for a brief question and answer time uh, that the congregation is allowed to ask questions. So if you have questions, um, you can be thinking of those because we'll have a, a brief Q&A time after uh, Caitlin presents. So be thinking of those questions if you have them. Um, but with that, I'll turn it over to Caitlin. Thanks so much, Jim. Um, yeah, I'm so, so excited to be here with you guys today. Um, it's really been a while <laughs> since I was last here. So, yeah, I mean, despite the pandemic kind of um, deterring us the first time I tried to go abroad, um, we did it. We did the thing, and I'm back <laughs> to tell you all about it. So, yeah. Well, I titled my presentation A Thousand Names because really there's so much I could say about, like, a year serving around the world, but my biggest takeaway was what I learned in my relationship with the Lord. Um, really, I feel like I know God by a thousand names now. Um, you know, like we know him as loving, forgiving, merciful, things like that, but I wrote down a, a list of other ways that I learned about him the past year. I learned that he's compassionate, and he's comforting, and understanding, powerful, patient, trustworthy, guiding, involved, intentional. He's healing. He's strong in me. He's protecting. He's clear, unhurried. He's inviting. He's enough. He's fullness of joy. He's a father. He's sovereign. He's beauty. Yeah, I could like go on and on like a thousand times. <laughs> um, but I hope that just sharing a little bit about yeah, who I got to know him better as will kind of stir in your heart to also like seek him more to know him, you know, more in that way. I also chose that passage in scripture, 2 Corinthians, about being ambassadors because how can we be ambassadors if we don't know him, you know, if we don't know his heart? And so, um, so yeah. All right, so if we go to the next slide, um, the purple dots are where my group was at. I went with a missions company called The World Race, and so we were backpacking um, to these different countries, uh, one per month. We were mostly in Eastern Europe, and then we went to the Middle East, and then after that, we went to North Africa. And I think uh, it was just <laughs> really unique how we were in that part of the world. Like, uh, specifically, we were in Ukraine in November and December, about three, four months before Russia invaded. And then we were in Georgia, which is right below Russia, um, when Russia invaded. So we got to be really involved with, first of all, like your brothers and sisters in Ukraine before the war happened. And then after that, we were able to minister to both like Russian and Ukraine refugees. Um, so that was just special that the Lord sent us there to kind of, I don't know, minister to them. And... Uh, be able to like share hope with him at such a crucial time. Um, if you go to the next slide. Um, so I have a, a slide for each country to kind of share a little bit about what ministry looked like in each place. Um, so in, uh, this was Romania. We actually were in Romania twice. Um, first time we partnered with the church, we were going to these tribal communities called the Roma communities or gypsy communities, and we were doing children's programs and uh, like street evangelism. And then the second time we came back, 
was at the end of our trip, then we were helping with the Romanian, uh, or I mean Ukraine refugees, so that's a family there from Ukraine. And um, actually these three, uh, they're all a family. They decided to accept Christ and follow Christ and get baptized as their savior, uh, which was really exciting. And um, if you go to the next slide. Next we went to Albania and uh, yeah, Albania was a unique month because some months our missions company had hosts for us, and then other months they didn't have any host. So they called it ATL month, which is Ask the Lord month, and they wanted us to just find contacts. <laughs> so they drop us off in the airport, and they're like, okay, you have no place to stay and no host, so pray and figure it out, and we'll see you back here in the airport in a month. <laughs> so that was wild and awesome. And uh, the Lord always provided for us, though. He always had someone kind of, like, waiting for us who wasn't even necessarily Christian, who, like, took care of us, had ministry opportunities for us. So um, that guy in the picture, his name's Luca. Um, he was our Airbnb host, and uh, he, like, gave us a tour of the city when we got there, and then he was like, oh, I'm from this village um, in the mountains, and right now they are uh, in all of harvest season. And he said, we don't have enough workers for the harvest. And we're like, well, that's what we're here for. <laughs> so we prayed as a team, ended up moving to this village for the month, and got to, yeah, just do everyday life with the people who lived there. And it was awesome. They, that village had not heard the gospel before, and so it was really awesome to yeah, bring the gospel there and leave some resources with them. Um, and cool how it was totally all unplanned by us, but the Lord had that ready for us. Um, on the next slide is Kosovo. Um, in Kosovo, we did a lot of children's ministry. Sometimes <laughs> um, sharing the gospel looks like dressing up like Mario and Winnie the Pooh. Who knew? Um, and then we did a lot of street evangelism in the villages, I don't know if you know a lot about Kosovo, but it's a very like war-torn country. They just became a, their own country in 2008, so still a lot of like growth happening there and a lot of like pain and things like that. So, yeah. Um, and the next slide. Uh, this was when we were in Ukraine. There we partnered with a church called Living Waters. Um, the church had a lot of ministries that they were doing. They were doing English clubs, uh, children's programs, youth groups, Bible studies. Um, so that's mainly what we did. We spent a lot of time with the families there, really, like people, I mean, maybe like twice a week or something like that. People from, families from the church would just have us over. So we got to like just do life with them and that was really fun. Um, that picture there is uh, like the biggest picture. Um, I was helping lead worship. That's Dasha, Anya, Ruslan, and Sasha. And they've been um, working with like refugees a lot as refugees are going from like the eastern part of Ukraine to the western part where it's a little more safer. Uh, next slide. Uh, this was in Jordan. Um, we actually spent Christmas in the desert with the Bedouin people. Um, so that was really cool. We were in tents, and it actually is cold in the desert in the winter. I had no idea. <laughs> um, but it was really cool that we were celebrating Christmas, and this Bedouin family was hosting us, and we're all just like sitting around this campfire that's like inside of a tent, and they were just kind of watching us and like asking questions like why are you doing this for Christmas Eve you know like who are you singing to that seems to make you really happy why kind of thing um, and then the rest of that month we partnered with a uh, like nonprofit restaurant that was basically ran on kindness um, you could go into the restaurant and uh, you could like pay for someone else's meal, like pay it forward and like leave a note on the wall. So it was kind of an opportunity to like serve the homeless and just anyone who needed a meal. And uh, we got to work alongside just locals who were there who weren't Christian. And then we would go out and have like coffee with them. And uh, also the big picture is me and Ahmed. He has a smoothie shop there and it was kind of hard to get fresh fruit. 
and be healthy <laughs> uh, while being on this trip. So I'd always go to a smoothie shop, and I just, yeah, got to, like, kind of hear some of his story. They are refugees from Syria, and so... Uh, just like every once in a while he'll send me like a picture of like some of his like his fruit creation or something like that and uh, I'm like awesome <laughs> but it's really sweet um, okay next slide so next was Turkey um, I that month was kind of challenging because it's illegal to share the gospel in Turkey so we would start out kind of each day doing like prayer walks and then just talk with people as we fed, felt led to. Um, we also partnered with a woman who had a gift shop and she, she was Christian and so we lived with her and she was helping like local people sell their kind of handmade items there. Um, she had a lot of tourists come through there, which is a great way to meet people. And uh, I also liked hanging out at this coffee shop. Um, the picture up at the top is the owner, Sanim, and we loved like hanging out. She would just come sit with me and visit whenever she wasn't busy. And then Mert was a college student that I would talk to pretty regularly. And then Uzgun and Daphne is actually a friend um, of like, I don't know if you guys know Mark and Laurel Watney, but they were in Turkey for a while, so I got to follow up with their friend. And then the next slide. Okay, so I don't actually have a slide for the country of Georgia, and there's a reason why. That month was another ATL month, and so we ended up uh, finding a church there, and we um, ended up doing like some homeless ministry. They had uh, started like a school for minority groups to kind of help them get some education, some like credibility for work, and so we helped with that. Um, for me, my ministry looked a little different from my teammates uh, because um, the, we all kind of had like ministry bios that I would like give our hosts to kind of know what, what to do with us really <laughs> when we got there. And uh, on my bio is like praying for people, like for healing, whether it's like emotional or like physical healing or, you know, just doing some kind of like counseling or deliverance. And um, so when the pastor saw that, she was like, hey, I think some people in our congregation could use that or just in the community, would you be willing to meet and pray with people? And I was like, absolutely. Um, and so I ended up meeting with about maybe like 10 different women and just like praying with them. And um, yeah, I there's a lot of stories I could share, but the Lord like met each person, you know, where they were at, like in their pain and, and their suffering. Um, and even when the people weren't Christians, actually, I prayed with this Muslim woman from Iran, and she actually uh, got delivered on the spot from a, uh, you know, like, demon of fear. And then she was like, wow, like, who is this God that has the power to do this? And I was like, like, um, so I was, you know, talking to her about scripture and things, and it was because she experienced that, you know, freedom uh, from fear and things, then she was able to take interest in like who our God is so that was really amazing he's really powerful in that way and wants to come and bring healing and strength so that's what my month looked like and why I don't have any pictures <laughs> for that um, this month uh, for this slide was Armenia and that month we partnered with an uh, orphanage for um, young adults with mental and physical disabilities and so we spent a lot of time with the staff there and uh, just ministering to them sharing the gospel with them and, uh, and then we would uh, like help like feed and uh, kind of push the residents around in wheelchairs and we could just pray over them, sing over them, um, help them smile, help them laugh, you know, kind of thing. So it was really, really special. Um, next slide. And then, um, so lastly, we ended up having like two weeks left over of our trip. And uh, so it was like, our missions company said, okay, you have two weeks. Um, you can go wherever you want. You got to use your personal money, though. But just, you know, be back in Bucharest, Romania, so we can all fly back to the States together at the end of the trip. So me and two of my friends, we prayed. We really wanted to continue to do, like, go around and share the gospel. We didn't want to take a vacation or anything. And uh, we decided to go to Egypt and Morocco. Um, and so that's where we went, and we got to talk with people. We got to see some pretty cool sites, which was great. Um, but yeah. So next slide. Um, so yeah, this is my whole squad. Um, I was with these people 
a lot, <laughs> and I loved him a lot. Um, and yeah, uh, the next slide. Yeah, our, it was really awesome. All of us were really focused on just like these three kind of main values of like seeking the Lord and growing in our intimacy with him and then choosing into community, not giving up on each other when it gets hard or there's misunderstandings, practicing forgiveness and reconciliation. And then also our mission is to share what God has done for us, who God is and, and how people can be reconciled to him. Um, next slide. So yeah, really at the end of the whole trip, I kind of have like three main stories to share. Um, they're just short little stories. Um, but the first story is about how the Lord, um, I don't know, I guess invited me into this trip, I guess, when I, I didn't necessarily feel chosen in a way. Um, so to explain about that is when our uh, mission, mission trip was about to launch, we were at training camp, and uh, everyone on the team had different roles, like maybe someone was treasurer, someone was a uh, team leader, um, someone did like the medical type thing, everyone had a role. And uh, before we were gonna leave on the trip, my uh, mentor wrote me, who was in charge of the squad, and she was like, hey, can I give you a call? And it's like, we're like leaving in a week. And I was like, sure. And I asked the Lord, I was like, Lord, what is she going to call me about? Because usually it's not a good thing when someone's like, hey, can I give you a call? Or hey, can I talk to you? I'm like, the trip hasn't even started yet. Um, <laughs> but I asked the Lord, and he was like, she's, he told me that she was going to ask me to team lead. And um, at that time, just to give you a little bit of context, like the pandemic that year and a half was really hard for me. I know it was really hard for a lot of people, but I experienced just, you know, like depression and just um, feeling a lot of brokenness and um, kind of abandoned by God. And at times I kind of felt forgotten. Um, and I, so when she asked me that, I was kind of like, ooh, I don't know if you want to choose me. I don't really feel like I have a lot to give out right now. And I, you know, I have pain in my heart and I kind of just want to hide and like heal it quietly or something like that. Um, and, but the Lord said, he was like, no, I, I um, your hardships have not disqualified you to be chosen by me. And he just said that I didn't need to worry about what to say or what to do, just that he was going to share with me what to say, what to do. I just need to walk in his footsteps because he's the good shepherd. He's a good leader, and I don't need to worry about being a good leader. He will, he will lead me. So I ended up saying yes, and, um, and so, yeah, I just loved that, that he said, your hardships haven't disqualified you to be chosen. So that was really special. Um, second story is about how the Lord goes after the one. Um, when we went to the country, Turkey, I knew that uh, my friends Mark and Laurel had been in Turkey and that they had friends there. So I uh, reached out to them and I was like, hey, do you have any friends left in the country? Um, I'll, go, I'll go see them. And they said, yeah, we have these friends. They're like on the very edge, like the most Western corner in this really small town. And so I was like, okay, we'll see where our team is placed and then I'll see if I can go see this person. And so we didn't, I didn't get to choose where our team was landing or anything like that, but uh, I found out that our team got placed like two hours from there. So I was like, wow, that's amazing. Um, because if you put like the country of Turkey on like the US of like to scale how big it is and like, and where we were placed and everything, like, um, like the country is huge. So we ended up getting placed just two hours in this huge country from this town where their friend's at. So, um, so I was excited about that. Then a couple days later, then um, Laurel texts me back and she's like, hey, actually, my friend moved to that exact town that your team is sent to, <laughs> which is absolutely bizarre. It's totally bizarre. And she'd moved there like four months ago. <laughs> I don't know why, <laughs> but um, and she wasn't Christian. Like she just, just moved there. Um, so yeah, I got to meet with her, and it was so special. It really showed me the Lord's heart that the Lord 
it, it was like 20 years after Mark and Laurel had been there with this woman. And so it's like 20 years later, like this woman is still like in the Lord's sight. He's still pursuing her. And he like sent our team to this specific spot right where she was to like follow up with her. So he's crazy. I love it. <laughs> um, okay, last story is um, about community. Um, living in community is really special and so valuable, but it can be so hard sometimes. <laughs> um, so what I mean by that is like the Lord taught me that we can't just demonstrate the gospel to like non-believers or people who haven't heard the gospel, but we have to demonstrate the gospel to each other too, which maybe is obvious, but I don't always think about that it that way. Um, and what I mean is, um, for example, I mean, no one's perfect. So all of us on the squad were like different ages from different parts of the US and the world, have different backgrounds, all kinds of things. And so we're occasionally stepping on each other's toes and we don't mean to, but we do. And uh, for example, uh, on one of my teams, there was a day where I like found out that one of my teammates had been like talking about me and just didn't you know, come to me about a conflict and, and share with me. So I was like really cut, you know, because I was leading, I was serving them, I was keeping my, open, my heart open towards them, sharing everything. And then, you know, to get betrayed like that, it cuts. And it's really hurtful. And so, but it's like, I gotta like sleep on a couch with this person. <laughs> I gotta share my carton of eggs with this person. So we gotta figure it out. And um, I was like weeping kind of to the side. And when I found out and my friend came over to me, it was just her and I, and she just put her hand on my, on my knee. And she said, hey, Caitlin, um, like remember that Jesus let Judas sit at the table with him. And uh, yeah, I didn't really have like a response to that. So I was like, oh, mic drop. <laughs> um, <laughs> but it really did hit me that like, wow, yeah, like Jesus, Jesus brought Judas close. He let him sit there right with him. He shared his heart. He shared everything he had with Judas. And, and unlike me, he knew all along what Judas was going to do. And I was just thinking like, if I would have known all along that, you know, this teammate was going to betray me, would I have loved her in the same way, you know, like with the same openness and everything? And I mean, I hope so. But um, that was like my big takeaway from community is just that's what, that's what makes us different from the world is the extravagant love and extravagant forgiveness that we show towards one another. Um, you know, because the world is like, oh, if someone hurts me, I'll just block them or cut them off. But like our community is different. Like we have extravagant love because we get it from the Lord and we have his example towards us of doing that. And so, um, so yeah, that's my takeaway is to not just demonstrate the gospel with, with others, but, uh, or non-believers, but also to each other because we, we really need it. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's all I have to share. Thanks so much for listening to my stories and praying for me, for sending me there. Obviously, I took away so much, and it's going to enrich my life for the rest of my life. So, yeah, thank you guys so much. All right, in view of the time, I think I'm going to just ask two quick questions of Caitlin. Um, so if you have questions, she's going to be staying for fellowship time. Um, so feel free to ask her those questions then, but I'm gonna change slightly and just go off the time and ask the question. So one practical question and a, one slightly bigger question. So first, um, when do you plan to go back to Romania? Um, yeah, I feel like the Lord was continuing to uh, invite me to just work with the refugees. I really have a heart for ministering to those who are uh, grieving, who have experienced trauma and just loss and things like that. So um, I'm going to move there this September and partner with that same church. It's actually the same church that we got in contact with. The Ukraine family that came here is the same pastor. So they're really great. Wonderful. And then uh, a second question 
What um, can we as the American church learn, do you think, from international churches that you have served and worked with? Yeah, um, I think just maybe my encouragement is like how, emphasis on like how we pursue people. Um, you know, like non-believers are probably not just going to walk through the church doors <laughs> and uh, be like, oh, this is an interesting place um, kind of thing. You know, like we need to go after them. We need to uh, build relationship with them, to pursue them, to take genuine interest in them and love them well, even through their questions and um, be honest about the things we don't understand or things that we don't know. Um, and uh, I think just in general, like, there's so many people who are hurting, even many Christians who used to be in these pews with you who are, you know, not here anymore, and, like, who is pursuing them, who is, like, going after them to say, hey, we miss you, like, um, you, you're cherished here, and um, I think, like, with the pandemic, a lot of people were, like, deconstructing their faith, and just to, like, kind of gather those people back in and say, it's okay if you have some questions. I have questions, you know, like, you know, be like, you're welcome here. You're welcome to like wrestle with those things with us. And you're not like unwelcome or something because you're hurting or because you have questions. So I, I just saw the church abroad doing that really well, pursuing people and um, walking with people well through like the hard times, through like comfort and not necessarily always having the right thing to say. Yeah. Well, join me again in thanking Caitlin for, for sharing her ministry update and her life with us. Well, thank you so much, Caitlin. Um, I, love, I loved hearing all of your stories about how you learn so much more about who God is um, and how he works when, when we're open. Um, I just think that's really cool. So um, with that in mind, um, let's continue in worship and remember that all of these things come about because Christ is working in us and through us. gift of grace is Jesus my Redeemer. There is no more for heaven now to give. He is my joy, my righteousness and freedom, my steadfast love, my deep and boundless peace. To this I
Caitlin, thank you again for sharing your message and the mission that you went through and kind of in response to that and how Caitlin gave us an encouraging note on community and the time that we spend together in fellowship, what joys do we have to share together? Are there any joys that anyone wants to share? A successful meet by the Sterling Forensics team. That's wonderful. We love seeing our uh, teens be successful. Anyone else? All right, and how about prayer request? How can we be in prayer for you or your loved ones or your friends this week? We'll be in prayers for Marvin and his wife, Sherry. Uh, I didn't know Marvin personally, but I have certainly heard of his impact in this church. Um, so we will spend time in prayer over him. Yes, Micah? Yeah. Um, we have a name for Chastity Roberts. Okay. Be in prayer for Chastity Roberts and her family. Anyone else? Yeah, Dan. Prayers for your mom as she starts treatments for leukemia. Absolutely. Anyone else? Well, let's go to the Lord in prayer and fellowship. God, we give thanks to you for how you move in the church, how you move in the church here at home, how you move in the church all across the U.S., and how you move in the church across the world. Thank you for people who are the light bearers and bringers of your word, God. And Lord, I pray over the requests that have come to us today. Lord, uh, as we grieve the loss of a loved one, as we pray over unheard prayer requests, Lord, as we pray over treatment, Lord, these things are hard and they are difficult. But I pray that for all the things that these people are going through, that they feel the peace and the love and the mercy of your presence, God, and that we spend time in earnest prayer and fellowship with these people. 
and come around them as you would command us to as a part of your body. Thank you, God, for the call that you put on our lives to love others and for God for us to pursue them and bring them into the fold of your body and your church. Amen. Well, would you stand together as we sing our closing hymn number 399, Take My Life and Let It Be. join me in this benediction. The world needs you and will patiently wait for your light to shine, illuminating just one small corner, speaking even a little bit of hope. We're in it together, along with the one who created us, the one who redeems us, the one who sustains us. Now go into the world, feeling the wrap of love around your shoulders, the embrace of well-being encompassing your heart the confidence that only requires one foot in front of the other, and the assurance that you are not alone. Amen. Amen.